Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Coming up tonight, a teen boy murdered in Grand Bahama overnight. A new board consultant vows to make changes at water and sewerage. Plus, Barbados has transitioned to a republic. Could the Bahamas follow suit? Government relaunches the shock treatment program and police in Grand Bahama feeling the holiday spirit. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Jared Higgs. Topping news tonight, a 17-year-old boy was shot and killed near a bar in Pinder's Point last night. Police were called to the scene shortly before 9 p.m. This killing comes amid a slew of shootings and killings on Grand Bahama, leaving some questioning what is happening on that island. Loved ones console each other as they mourn a teenager who was gunned down in West Grand Bahama on Friday night. He was approached by a male armed with a firearm who was discharged several rounds of ammunition in this direction. Our news understands the victim is just 17 years old. According to Grand Bahama Police Press Liaison Officer ASB Stephen Roll, he was working near a bar in the Pinders Point area when he was attacked. This reports indicated that a juvenile male, while in this area, conducting some mechanic works to a vehicle, he would have walked across the street. EMS personnel visited the scene and pronounced the teen dead. Loved ones mourned this tough loss as his body was taken away. Let me offer my condolences to the family whom have lost a loved one here tonight. Roll says police have some information they are following. The police are following some leads in this matter. And hopefully, we'll bring this matter to a close or very soon. I want to urge to members of the public who may have any information in regards to the incident tonight to please contact the Criminal Investigation Department at 350-3106. This killing comes amid a rash of shootings and killings in Grand Bahama, an uptick that police say they are trying to address. What I can say is that um, we want to continue to urge the public to find ways to resolve conflicts. Um, we have a lot of young men out there who may find themselves in possession of illegal firearms. And if poisons are aware of these firearms and these poisons possession, the police can talk in the earth police station so that these guns can come up the streets and we can save. The Ministry of Health and Wellness addressing false reports on social media that allege Minister of Health Dr. Michael Darville approved the holiday carnival to operate on Clifford Park from December to January 2022. Officials said in a statement the proprietors of the holiday carnival made an application to the Ministry of Health and Wellness to host a popular event. The ministry acknowledged the application and gave recommendations on how to improve COVID-19 protocols that must be carefully implemented at such an event. Health officials say they await the proprietor's response. In response to public concerns about the importation of trailers and amusement park equipment into the country, the Ministry of Health pointed out it has no jurisdiction over the importation or exportation of non-medical items into the Bahamas. Officials assured that the public, uh, if any event poses a threat to public health, the ministry reserves a right to revoke any previous approvals granted for a public event. Water and sewage employee turned board consultant Kirk Cornish is vowing to use his wealth of knowledge of the corporation to improve conditions for staff. Berthing McDermott reports. Newly appointed WSC board member Kirk Cornish says change is needed at the corporation. Topping that list, he says, is the way employees are treated by management, especially those on the family islands. On the family islands, I think that the staff are disenfranchised because of the distance that lies between them and the top management of the organization. And of course, I think that it is vitally important that we have a proper chairman and people who cares about people who actually show compassion, understanding towards people. I recall being in Abaco and wasn't able to get a uniform pants to do the work in after Hurricane Dorian had to wash and scooch out the pants every two days just to have pants to be at the work. Those things are uh, human beings enough to know in this place of employment. The North Abaco MP was appointed consultant to the new board. Before entering frontline politics, Cornish spent 28 years at WSC and served as a shop steward for 18 years. Amid reports that Cornish was the PLP's candidate for North Abaco, he was placed on administrative leave without pay. Well, I'm not bitter. 
and I don't intend to keep reciting the experience I had at the Water Source Corporation. I accept that I move on. It's a part of life. It's a process. It's learned. But I do intend to share my experience with people and definitely ensure that other persons would not have to go through it. Training is, is important at the corporation, but rewarding is important. He had this bit of advice for the new WSC chairman. His first business of water, water business, should be to um, build the relationship back with the staff, especially the staff in Abaco. It was lost in the last two years after Hurricane Dorian. The treatment of the staff, the behavior, it was ridiculous. It, it was not necessary. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. Thanks, Berthony. Well, as Barbados transitioned to a republic, more Caribbean nations are looking at the possibility of removing the Queen as the head of state. Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell says he believes it's a move the Bahamas should have made a long time ago. Last time the Queen came here, the day before, I said it's time for her to go. That was 95 or thereabouts, right? Time to go. Uh, but I've said to the younger ones who were excited about this possibility after Barbados that if that's something they want to do, I support them. Uh, but it's their fight. I don't think it's my fight anymore. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to support whatever they want to do if that's the direction they want to go in. And I invite them to do so and to get it done. It's time to get it done. It's overdue. As Michael Manley would say, it's impatient of debate. The process would be a bit different for the Bahamas as it will take a referendum. Mitchell says given the fate of previous referenda in the country, it's questionable. However, he added the move would be beneficial for the country as it places power in the hands of the people. In terms of the power relationships, nothing much has to change. But it is the psychological and cultural effects of saying we are our own country. Our head of state represents us and that head of state is a behavior. And all the power is, is invested in that behavior on our behalf. That's the constitutional theory of it, and that, that is the culturally appropriate thing to do in this uh, dispensation. So to come on our news, our Grand Bahamians feeling the holiday spirit, we got some mixed reactions. A popular program makes a comeback, and appointments for extended dose vaccinations commence next week. Find out more after this. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. The Ministry of Health and Wellness announcing that as of Monday, extended dose appointments, not boosters, will be available in New Providence to individuals who are immunocompromised. The extended doses will commence on Grand Bahama and the Family Islands on December 9th. Those eligible for extended doses include individuals who have active cancer or ended treatment within the last 12 months, persons who have had an organ transplant, are on chronic dialysis, have HIV with a current CD4 count, and individuals are required to present a letter from a doctor confirming that they can receive the extended dose of available, available vaccines. The Ministry of Health also revealing that booster shots will be available before the end of the year to persons who have completed their primary series of Pfizer or AstraZeneca at least six months ago, and in the case of Johnson & Johnson, two months ago. The rollout of booster shots will be conducted in a phased approach similar to the approach taken at the commencement of the vaccination exercise. Healthcare workers, first responders, teachers, and persons over 60 years of age will be eligible in the first phase. Meanwhile, some Grand Bahamians say they are in the Christmas spirit, but they admit that there are other factors making it tough to celebrate. Sasha Gibson is a police sergeant and mother of a 10-year-old. She says gifts seem to be on the pricier side this year. A lot of the gifts are very expensive. I have a 10 year old and so her gift selection is things like Xbox and Minecraft and all those things. So for that reason. Meanwhile, resident Shelton Miller says global challenges are putting a damper on holiday celebrations. I am feeling the spirit. I am feeling the spirit. But right now the spirit is not feeling us because of what's going on in the world. It's a major setback. Miller was holding his daughter, who was born in March 2020 when the pandemic was just starting. 
He says he and his family plan to celebrate with traditional Christmas meals and shopping, but they'll be staying on island. We're not going to be able to travel this year because of what's going on with the uh, tests and all that going on. So we're going to try to see if we can just stay right here in-house with what's going on. We have a couple of coupons. Uh, hopefully that one of them will give us a turkey and a ham that we can still have for Christmas. Another resident says she is looking forward to enjoying this Christmas season, considering the challenges brought on by Hurricane Dorian in 2019 and the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. She added her son has, strict, has a strict criteria for his gift list. Well, he's not getting any gifts unless he gets A's. So, so far he's on the road to getting gifts because he's been getting A's. We're going to be visiting families and friends and just enjoying this moment. After going through, like I said, the ordeal of Dorian and the COVID-19 and all that stuff. So this is really a nice environment now where everyone can come together and just celebrate. When our news comes back from the break, government shock treatment program is back. And later, the police force sprinkles some holiday magic during a difficult year for Grand Bahama. We have the details when our news returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Welcome back. The government is relaunching its shock treatment program, which exposes at risk or troubled youth to the realities of life behind bars and the consequences of a life of crime. National Security Minister Wayne Monroe says the program is more than what's seen on TV. We expect to have a more streamlined and targeted approach in order to tackle the problems we are facing. I'm personally encouraging parents and guardians of young men and women who are presenting challenges in the home, at school, or may appear to be headed towards a life of crime to contact our shock treatment secretariat in order to seek to enroll their child in this program. The program targets youngsters ages 10 to 18. Pastor and youth advocate Carlos Reed says before the program was stopped, it had helped a number of teens, even those who were not participants. He said they will also learn important skills. We're going to focus on how we tailor make uh, situations and solutions for each one of the persons that would be enrolled in this program. Not only that, uh, parents that are signing up, they're going to be mandated that they go to uh, a parenting program that uh, is now being hosted by social services. The show was widely popular on television. Royal Bahamas Defense Force Senior Lieutenant Delvon Duncombe says for him it's more than just shocking the children into being better, but ensuring that they understand the importance of making the right life decisions. It is a method. There's a method to the madness. And so we build and we break. That's what we do. And so that is uh, what shock treatment, um, a part of it is designed to do. It is designed to break and build. Uh, and in some cases, they've already been broken um, in, in other ways where they are acting out. And so this is an opportunity for us to now build, um, cause them to understand law and authority, uh, cause them to understand self, lead self before um, trying to lead others. And that's, that's, that's more of the leadership concept. The show's producer, Andrew Burroughs, says, unfortunately, some of the young men who went through the last season have ended up behind bars and some have died. The seasons that we have in the can will be the opportunity for us to go back and revisit with some of these boys because we know how their stories have progressed and not all of them have been good. So those ones, you will see where are they now. You will see where, and, and to be honest, in, in, the, yeah, in the first of the two remaining series, uh, the kids who are going through that program will come face to face in prison with a couple of the boys who were in the first season. Still ahead, police on Grand Bahama kick off the holiday season and a member of the Our News family ties the knot. Stay with us.
Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Police officers in Grand Bahama getting into the Christmas spirit as the RBPF held its tree lighting ceremony last night. Santa Claus was on hand giving out goodies to the children. Speaking before the lighting of the tree was Assistant Commissioner of Police with responsibility for Grand Bahama and the Northern Bahamas, Theophilus Cunningham. During this holiday season, we will celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, who for over 2,000 years has had the greatest influence on the entire mankind. His message was a simple one, peace on earth and goodwill to all mankind. The ceremony was held at Central Police Station in Grand Bahama. It featured three selections, including one from the Tabernacle Academy Band. And I would like to take this time to say, on behalf of the Commissioner of Police, the entire Royal Bahamas Police Force, in particular officers of the Northern Bahamas District, we are happy to have you to come and celebrate this joyous occasion with us. Before we go, the RTV family extends heartfelt congratulations to our graphic artist Joey Butler, who married the love of his life, Colette Daxon, today at Utopia Gardens in Adelaide during a beautiful outdoor ceremony. We wish the lovely couple a lifetime of love, laughter, and happiness. And thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Jared Higgs. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.